And I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks on adding or taking away length from the brand new peg legs pattern to add to our peg legs collection, the color block pack. Since it's color blocked all down the leg and it's got a contour waistband, I thought I would hop on and show you how I like to add or take away length from these color block pieces. So, come on. All right, guys, here we are. I'm going to show some of the pieces, not all of the pieces, just because a lot of them would be repeating the same thing over and over. I have um, tester versions here too, so as you can see, I hadn't named it yet. Um, so mine might look very, very slightly different, but it's going to be the same concept here. All right, so we have our three front pieces, and here's our inseam. This is where we're going to talk about adding or taking away length first. Since it's color blocked, um, you can't just add it all in one spot or take it away all in one spot. You never want to do that anyways because a lot of people will add and take away everything from this bottom part, right? So if I need an inch and a half taken off, they'll go like this. But the problem is then my knee, here's my knee marking, my knee is now too high. I didn't add length anywhere above my knee. Um, and also, my knee is probably going to be too tight because where my knee is up higher and the smaller part is now at my knee. Things like that. You never want to just add or take away all from the bottom. All right. I am tall. I'm 5'10", so I always add length. But this concept would be exactly the same except for instead of adding, you would be taking away. Since these are color blocked, um, I found myself wondering where the best spot to add or take away is. I do mark the knee here. So this is about halfway down your inseam. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add half of my inseam length above this and half of my inseam length below this because I feel like that's pretty even. So I add completely and totally, I add um, 1.5 inches to my inseam on all patterns. So half of that would be I want three quarters of the way down here from below the knee. And I want three quarters of the, of an inch added above the knee. Now for me, this looks, it's about a third, a third, and a third. So I'm going to add one quarter, one quarter, one quarter. It's a little bit of math, it is. But if you do it, then you'll keep the proportions and you'll keep your knee where it belongs, which is really important in a fitted garment. So on this three quarters, I could probably break that up if I wanted to, or I could just go kind of in the middle of my piece and spread it out. Three quarters isn't too, too much to break up. Um, here's my knee. The marking didn't print on mine. Here's that knee. So I'm going to go about halfway. It's always important to make sure that you're nice and parallel is why I'm using a um, quilter's ruler to draw my lines. And I'm going to spread three quarters of an inch. And then retrace that part. I'm going to add a quarter of an inch right here. I'm just going to use the bike cut line because I know these are perfectly straight and parallel. So no need to worry about that. And I only spread this one a quarter of an inch. So now I can retrace this and it is perfectly elong elongated for my longer body. 
can do exactly the same on the back piece. And you'll do the same on these pieces. You'll cut straight across. Again, I'm gonna use this short cut line because I know it's straight. And I would only spread a quarter of an inch. Here we go. This one doesn't have a cut line on it to um, cheat off of for a nice straight horizontal line. It's really easy to draw one though. You use the grain line. Put your ruler straight on the grain line. There we go. And draw it straight across. And that's where you could cut and spread a quarter of an inch. Now I'm going to talk about the rise a little bit. Um, the rise on these are a low to mid rise and it has the con a contoured waistband which ends up high waisted above the belly button at the natural waist. So from here to here is your rise. I usually add an inch on all my patterns from my waist to my hip. Your full hip is about right here. It's not at the very bottom of the crotch curve. A lot of people think that, that the very bottom of the crotch curve is the hip, but the hip is usually actually just a couple inches above this crotch curve is your full hip. Of course that depends on how high or low the widest part of you is, but average is about right here. So I need a full inch from here to here. So I just split it up evenly. I add half an inch right here on the rise and I add half an inch on my waistband. So I would draw another straight horizontal line using my grain line and I would cut and spread half an inch. And I'm gonna go in and cut and spread this one. I like to do it right in the middle of my rise and right in the middle of my piece because I find it easy to blend if I do it right in the middle. If you're taking away, just make sure you're giving yourself a little seam allowance here. So this was a quarter of an inch. You always wanna make sure your grain line is perfectly straight when you tape this down to retrace, it's very important. And this was a full half inch. So again, keep that grain line straight and you'll notice that these don't line up. The grain line is what you wanna line up. And this is where it gets blended when you trace. Blended just means from the top to bottom, you wanna redraw this curve as close as you can just a little bit longer. So what happens is usually you take a little off here and you add a tiny bit here, but it's very, very small usually. And here was a half an inch. Since this is on the fold, that's going to be nice and straight and so is your grain line. But since these are curved, you're really going to want to use that grain line to keep it nice and straight. Same thing on your color blocked pieces, using the grain line to keep it nice and straight. So your back piece, you would do the same thing, draw about halfway through, make a nice straight horizontal line, cut it, and either overlap it if you're making it shorter or spread it out if you're making it taller. You wanna do it exactly the same as you did your front. So I added half an inch to this one, I'm gonna add half inch to this one. The other thing I'm going to talk about is if you're doing the pocket version. It has a couple more pieces and you're just want to, going to want to stay consistent cutting across, spreading or taking away evenly just like you did on your front piece. There's pocket pieces which fit onto the back piece. You can make these a little taller or shorter. Now if you're if you are making your back piece a little bit shorter, you must make this big tall one a little bit shorter. 
because this one goes almost to the very top of this one. Okay. If you're making your main one taller, you don't really have to add any height to it, but you can if you want, if you just want a bigger pocket because you're taller and you have more room and you can, um, you can. Um, but these really aren't going to affect the fit at all since they're just a patch pocket. Um, so nice and easy there. All right, guys, that's it. So after you think about those color block sections, where your knee is, which is about midway down your inseam, and how much you want to take off each section, it's nice and easy. Just takes a little bit of time thinking about how to get that perfectly proportional, either adding your length that you need or taking it away. But you only have to do it once, trace it off, and then you have a perfectly fitted pattern for yourself, which is priceless, getting leggings long enough or short enough where the knee is in the right spot, the thigh is in the right spot, the calf, the waistband hits right at your natural waist. You can't beat it. I hope you have fun making these brand new color block pack peg legs. I cannot wait to see everybody's and I really hope we see lots of 2020 smiles from these new color block peg legs.